um, that kind of see us in a, in a business context of a business that's set up to give, which aren't very many, many businesses. This maybe people kind of think this is the old giving, the kind of CSR report, right? Company goes and sells a bunch of crap and then they give a little bit of money and they make this nice report and they feel good about themselves. And so I think people think that maybe like this is the new giving, is this kind of cause marketing or even the, you know, Tom's one for one, that this kind of engaged customer and the company's really doing something great on the other end. Um, and so, I mean, I'm just here to say that on the surface, this and this are exactly the same. Because unless these guys are doing this any more thoughtfully than the people who uh, put all the stuff in this report, then it's no different. Because you're still making life really, really hard for the people you're giving money or goods to. And so you're still doing it for the kudos and to sell your Tide or your shoes or your soup or whatever it is. Um, and so neither of these things is the, is the solution. Neither of them is wrong necessarily. But it's kind of dig beneath that and I'll go into the kind of We've heard all these inspiring people, and, and so I might be a little boring and talk about the kind of behind the scenes stuff for a couple minutes. So this is the dirty truth with Tom's, with any company that's trying to do well, is this is how many people care whether you're giving well or not. I'm going to put this water down. So, oh, shoot, sorry. This is how many people care. Nobody is going to make you give well. Um, your customer is not going to. That's the kind of hard truth, I think. Um, and I think that giving in a mediocre way is the easiest job in the world. Um, I'll stop for a minute a little bit about Tom's. Apparently you all know what Tom's is, but in short, we sell shoes like these. Um, and with every pair of shoes that we sell, we give a new pair of shoes to a child in need somewhere in the world in our one-for-one -one model. The company was set up to give shoes away. And we still have to work really hard to make sure that's threaded through the whole company. Um, so we give shoes through, just a little bit of background, always by shipping them in large quantities, new made-to-order shoes, to NGOs and public health organizations all over the world. And then they distribute the shoes as part of what they're doing in prevention of soil transmitted diseases, access to education. Did you know that in a lot of countries you can't attend school if you're barefoot? Um, and so they're kind of weaving shoes into their larger impacts rather than just us kind of showing up places and dumping shoes and feeling good about ourselves. We're trying to do things in a, in a thoughtful way. Um, the way that I could have a, this, a four hour work week, um, is to stop caring about any of these things. So if I don't worry about what size shoes that I send to my partners in the field, if I don't worry about whether the color is appropriate for both the weather conditions and the school uniforms that the kids wear, if I don't worry whether they're durable enough for the terrain, if they're flip-flops and actually kids are exposed to hookworms so flip-flops aren't going to do anything, um, if I don't worry about the costs to the partners of distributing and where they're going to have to fundraise to pay for the gas in the tank of the truck or the person that's going to rent them out a literally donkey to bring shoes to wherever they're going, um, if I don't care about the local economy and whether shoes are already being sold for children there, if I don't care about the impact of the shoes, and if I don't care about what happens six months from now when um, those kids wear out or grow out of their shoes, then this is my work week, and this is who I get to spend more time with. That's my guy. He's asleep over there with his dad. That's Otis. So, I mean, I could just, honestly, I could do my job in four hours a week and then just play with Otis all day. Um, but we'll go back to the elephant in the room, is actually that's possible. I could do that because that's how many people give a shit, excuse me, about whether or not I give a shit about all of these things. Most people are just, they have a tiny attention span because they have other things in their lives other than our shoes. They just buy the shoes, they feel good about it, they tell their friends about it, our movement grows, and that's wonderful, but they're never asking hard questions of us. That red group is, but the blue guys don't care. And that's not bad on them. They have other stuff in their lives. And that's kind of the elephant in the room, I think, is we, the kind of holy grail of, of for-profit social enterprise is that the social good drives the profit, and the profit drives the social good, and all those things move forward together. And it does sound really nice, but in practice, we, have to, uh, we could get away with a lot if we wanted to. Um, so that's my point. Nobody's going to make you give well. So how do you do it anyway, if you're going to hold yourself or your business or whatever to that standard, higher standard? So let's see if Otis left me any notes on here. Um, the first is uh, thinking about the incentives of the people that work within your business. Um, 
so people are always explicitly or implicitly incentivized to act a certain way. Everybody thinks they're acting rationally. Um, and most people working in a business setting are incentivized to drive down costs and look great to their boss at the end of the day. I made these shoes for a lot cheaper. I got this great deal. And I'm not you know, trying to get into Tom specifically, but that's where I work, so I think about shoes all the time. Even if you tell them, no, you don't have to make whatever we're giving cheaper. You don't have to make that more cheaply. You don't have to save money. Well, how is their bonus calculated? And what did, how did they get rewarded and paid in their last job? I think you have to really do the kind of boring work of thinking about how is everybody in the company incentivized? Where did they come from before? If you're going to create truly a culture of people who are going to try really hard to do well, even if nobody is watching or asking. The second thing I think is really important is you can't staff the work of the doing good within this enterprise or business with bleeding hearts. You just, you, you cannot have it full of kind of kumbaya people that have a reputation of only trying to do good and sort of almost being antagonistic toward the for-profit side of the business. Um, you know, I, I, I have been doing social innovation work my whole adult life, um, and that's because I love people. But I, that's why I get out of bed to go in, to work in the morning, but it's not what I do. It's not the organ I use to do my job. That's up here. Because um, if I had a reputation at Tom's for screw, not caring, screwing over the business because I want to help kids so much, I would not be heard on serious matters at Tom's. The other people that have to turn a profit at that business, wouldn't, I, I would have no credibility with them. Because I'd come to meetings and say, guys, we really have to do this, or we have to spend money on this. And they'd go, there she goes again, hippie, Austin, Texas, whatever. And we're not going to you know, we're not gonna listen. And so I think you need to really, you need people, obviously, who care. But the kind of point, they have to be able to check that emotion at the door to do their job well and work. If you expect the people on the business side of the business to think about the impact, and you're working on the impact side, you better care about the business side, too. Um, otherwise, you're doing everyone a disservice. Does that mean seven left or seven in? Oh, geez. This is going to be short, people. Um, the other, the kind of third point, I think we're on number three, is about commitment. So one year of, of funding or one year of gifts and kind, which is what Tom's does, doesn't, isn't commitment. And it doesn't allow an organization to make plans. Um, so if we just kind of gave shoes once to an organization, they'd go, that's great, and they'd hold a special party and all the orphans or whatever would get shoes and they'd feel really happy about it, but it would never truly become part of what they do because we haven't committed to them. So when we go to partners, we're saying to them, we are going to send you shoes now and you tell us, start watching how kids are growing and how they're wearing through their shoes because they're their only pair of shoes they wear through pretty quickly. Um, so that we can send the next shipment and the next shipment. We're not going to, and they'll go, well, but don't you want to do new countries next year? And we're like, that's not, no, that's not what we're doing. We're not just putting a new country on our website because that'll look cool. After the Haiti earthquake, people, we had some customers contacting us and going, can I make sure that the one for one pair, I just bought a pair of shoes, can you send the other one to Haiti? And we had a really serious conversation about it and we went, no, sorry guys. And, and the reason is because next year when there's another natural disaster somewhere else, You'll want all the shoes to go there, and then we'll have to screw over all the organizations we're giving to in Haiti or wherever else. So we're serious about commitment, even if it's not as fun from a marketing perspective. And I'm lucky that my colleagues on the marketing side um, are OK with that and, and are willing to be creative and think of different ways to tell stories. Um, point, whatever point we're on, is about developing your giving programs in a vacuum, about how not to do that. Um, if you structure the product that if in a so in a one for one business like Tom's where you're selling a product and then doing some giving direct, directly from that, if you structure that product that you're selling without having the social impact people at the table, you're not going to have done any of the previous things on here because then you're going to go okay you have X number of dollars to spend on this thing or you have this product to give and then uh, you don't know if that's needed it has to be informed kind of like Philip Berber said at the beginning from the grassroots level. Um, but you also can't structure the giving without having the key business people at the table. So it's very much this give and take um, idea. And, and the kind of third thing on this is we're kind of always demanding that our NGO partners help us improve. Like, is our shoe good enough? Does it fit? Is it wide enough? Because kids that are barefoot for a long time, their foot gets really wide over years. And so we're just kind of trying to make sure that that conversation, it's not linear back and forth. It's sort of circular. And it is... Fortunately or unfortunately for us, never ending. Um, 
Next thing I wanted to say is, a, is, is to really understand the cost of delivery in the field. So if we just paid for the physical shoe to be made in a factory, um, the rest of this pie is what our partners would have to go fundraise somewhere else to actually get those shoes on kids' feet. And I always tell people, like, it says on the inside of our shoe, with every pair you purchase, Tom's will give a shoe to a child, a pair of shoes to a child in need. It doesn't say Tom's will make a pair of shoes and then an NGO has to pick it up and pay the ocean freight and the inland shipping and put the gas in the tanks of the vehicles and rent the storage space and then a kid will end up having shoes. We have to think about the rest of this pie if we truly ethically want to deliver on that promise. But I go back to however many slides ago, nobody, not, our customers aren't asking us those questions by and large. A few vocal minority is, but we have to, we have to do it anyway. And there's no, there's kind of no way around that. Um, oh, so I already said all of this. Good. Um, so this is the payoff. This is kind of the best day of my job was a few days ago when I was having a conversation with a new potential partner. And I just want to sort of interrupt myself to say we are not doing this perfectly at all. We're less than five years old and still learning a lot. Um, but anyway, this was the best day of my job. This person I was explaining to this NGO who had had an experience previously of receiving a shipment of T-shirts or whatever, just getting kind of random donations as they came. And she said, you're telling me you're going to send me what the kids we serve actually need in the sizes that fit them. I don't have to fundraise elsewhere to do this. And when the kids need more, you'll send more. And there was this kind of weird silence. I said, yeah. And she was like, well, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> and I got that, you know, I got to say, well, but that's just, that's what we do. Um, and I feel really lucky to work at a place that supports that. But it's not going to happen from, at least not today, not in the foreseeable future for me. It's not going to happen from market forces. I think we always think market forces are going to solve everything. And, Conscious consumerism means that uh, our consumers are going to make us do this. They're, they're not there yet, and I don't think we should wait around for them to get there or expect them to do it. I think we should expect ourselves to do it. Um, I think this is my last slide. There's a couple ways to do it, and both are equally valuable, I think. So there's the rowboat, which is all of you guys, you know, startups, and Tom's too. Tom's is four and a half years old. You get to move and change, and you can build that in right from the beginning, but you are small. Um, but you can be a phenomenal example. And then there's the kind of tanker that is, takes a lot longer to turn. You know, it's like, it's going to take forever, and there's so many people on the ship, and the captain is probably a jerk. And so <laughs> it's going to take a while, but also worth doing, because when it moves, it's going to move all of that stuff and all of those resources with it. Um, I think it's my last slide. Yeah. So that's it from me, and thanks for your time, and thank you very much, everybody, for what you do.